hey guys, how are you? Joe, that was awesome. I have to say, I laughed a Brazilian times. Uh, anyway, I'm Sarah. Thank you guys for being here. Um, wow, this is so weird. Who here thought they were going to watch a Zoom comedy show? I mean, it's not even stand-up. It's technically sit-down. And yes, I, I went there. But anyway, I guess Zoom is the norm now. But think of it this way. Even if I don't make you laugh, this show is keeping you safe in your house away from COVID. What I'm saying is, I saved your life. In lieu of hazard pay, I'm gonna need you to laugh. And I know you're all on mute and we talked about this, but if you could just maybe like pantomime amusement, like maybe jazz hands, maybe a small ceremonial dance, whatever you wanna do. Or, you know, don't laugh, I'm used to it. My own family actually doesn't laugh at my jokes. They won't admit it to you, but my family is boycotting me in the family group chat. My parents will respond to literally anything my brother and sister send. It could be a picture of dry toast. But when I send curated comedic content, total silence. Maybe I'll test the waters on this. Like, I might tell them I'm pregnant. Or maybe I'll post a picture of toast, but like, I'll put jelly on mine. Being ignored is even worse because this chat is on WhatsApp. And WhatsApp has those little check marks to show who's seen the message. Like, one gray, sent, two gray, some have seen it, or two blue. No one loves me. One place my family really does come together, though, is shitting on other people's grammar. We, uh, you know, last year Uncle Joe used a misplaced modifier. We cut him out of the family. Passive voice, we hate it. Nay, it is hated by us. The best thing about being an asshole about grammar is you can blame other people for your problems. Like, I'm a terrible cook. Everything I make is either raw or burned, or somehow both. And you know whose fault that is? Recipe writers and their misuse of the English fucking language. Hear me out. You know how ingredient lists are sometimes low-key just lists of fully prepared meals? They get you with the past participle, like 10 apples, comma, diced, or two quiches baked, one Thanksgiving meal prepared. What is that? That's like AA saying, step one, years of sobriety, comma, achieved, or a cancer chemo treatment saying, cancer, comma, cured. Or politicians in 2003 saying, Iraq war won. But to be honest, things are pretty dicey even before I get the ingredients home. I've been having a lot of um, issues lately with the uh, robot lady at grocery store self-checkout. She and I used to have an uneasy detente. She might not detect that I had placed my scanned cilantro in the bag, but she was willing to take my word for it. And sure, I mean, if I stopped bagging for more than eight seconds, she was gonna shriek, please continue scanning! But who could blame her? She's got places to be. But lately, I don't know, man. Three items into my self-checkout, and I've already gotten four help is on the ways. I feel like I get more desperate every time the, the uh, grocery store employees come over to help. By that fourth time, I'm on the floor, my arms around their legs, like, please don't leave me! But honestly, I've been alone before, in the darkest possible way, in Florida. For those of you who haven't been there, let me tell you a little bit about my time in Tampa. My tampon period, if you will. I had this great apartment, a pad, you might say, all to myself, or so I thought. My second night there, I was sitting on the floor eating a baked potato, burned and raw, a Cutler classic when I saw a massive fucking roach scuttle across the floor past me and into a closet. Luckily, I followed the trusty roach protocols. Step one, I screamed. Step two, I trapped it in the closet. And step three, Iraq war won. No, but seriously, what was my game plan here? Suffocation? We're talking about one roach trapped inside an entire walk-in closet. For a roach, that's luxury. He was probably able to sublet it to the other roaches. Maybe he was able to acquire more properties and start up a thriving real estate business. And maybe he was able to accumulate enough capital to start up an investment bank and give out subprime loans with adjustable rate mortgages. And maybe closet properties everywhere faced a wave of foreclosures. But you know how it is when a roach is too big to fail. In any case, I definitely, I definitely did not establish deterrence. Months later on Valentine's Day, I came home late from work, flipped on the lights, and on the back wall, I saw four roaches, two of them, how do I put this delicately? Putting the cock in cockroach. But hey, it was Valentine's Day. I'm glad somebody in this apartment had a date. And though I did spray them to death, I, I admire that they went out with a bang. But 
That's when I realized I needed to set a new goal for my adult life, to be as romantically fulfilled and financially stable as a roach. Will I ever get there? Let us spray. Thank you guys so much.